Hey, y'all. I was, d um, unalive for a while there, but now I'm un unalive. I'm, <laughs> I'm alive now. I've, uh, I've been having some bad, some bad stuff's happen, so that's why I haven't updated in a while. Um, I never stopped working and doing auditions and taking classes or anything like that. I just stopped updating the YouTube channel. But now I'm, I'm, I'm healthy, both physically and mentally, so I'm back to doing a few updates a month, hopefully. And a lot's happened <laughs> since I've been gone, actually. I've updated my studio quite a bit. I, I bought those really cool foam panels that people get when they want to look all professional. And I've completely covered my closet in them. I've taken a bunch of workshops. I'm going to talk about those in a minute. I've done a few more little gigs. Um, and I actually had to sign an NDA for another gig I did that's actually hopefully going to be something I can put on a resume. We'll see how that goes. I can't talk about it, so... And, yeah, no, it, it's been a bit of a ride. It's been... A lot's happened, and I've updated my Patreon about it. If, if anyone's curious, you can head over to my Patreon for the details of what's actually been going on, why I've been away. Other than that, I'll, I'll talk about the classes I've taken and, and the ones I recommend for any up-and-coming voice actors. So I've taken a few workshops through Studio NPC, which is run by Jun Yoon. And he gets a lot of cool people to come in and teach, sometimes casting directors, sometimes other voice actors in the industry. And uh, the first workshop I took through there was called Ask the Directors. And there were three directors, or uh, casting call directors, uh, Jen Losey, Brooke Chalmers, and Michael Allen Schneider. I just thought it'd be kind of neat to go to a workshop with a bunch of directors talking about what they deal with on the regular, and that's basically what it was. It was a very affordable workshop where you most the directors just talk about what they expect from actors when they come into the studio, some of the things they have to deal with <laughs> with actors, and the things they wish they didn't have to deal with, things they do like, and at the end of the session, we were allowed to ask any questions that came to mind. <laughs> I, I kind of embarrassed myself a little bit because uh, one of these directors I do actually kind of know of. Uh, I know that they do casting for for uh, like non-player characters in Genshin Impact, and so I had sent them like a a cold call email at one point several months before uh, attending this workshop. And I did actually kind of want to know if cold calling is even okay, and if it is, um, when you should follow up if you've not received like a response, for instance. <laughs> I, I worded it like it was a hypothetical, like, so I have this friend who <laughs> sent a cold call email, and then I have another friend, wink wink, who did the same, and one person heard back and the other person didn't, so does it mean anything if one person hears something back, even if the email's just, hi, I got your email, thanks for sending it, and the other person heard nothing back? Also, if, if you don't hear anything back, can you follow up? And at what point can you follow up? Like six months, a year? Uh, what's what's like the required? What's what's the protocol on this? <laughs> and then Brooke immediately was like, "Yes, Kelly, I got your email." <laughs> Just fucking died. <laughs> I was like, "Okay, good." <laughs> uh, the TLDR anyway. Uh, the, the answer to that is it's okay to follow up and it's okay to cold call. Um, when you follow up, of course. <laughs> they said that sometimes they get passive-aggressive emails following up, like, I guess you didn't get my other email, so I'm sending you this one. Hopefully you get it. Like, don't, don't do that. I don't know why people do that. <laughs> I don't, it's kind of sad they have to even state that, but yeah. And so, so I did send him, like, a follow-up email, uh, later on. To show that I was paying attention to the class. <laughs> <laughs> but that kind of took me off guard. I did not think he would even recognize me as someone who has emailed him. So that was that was neat, and I learned a lot from that. And I think I think that workshop only cost twenty dollars, and it was very informative. I really liked that one. Um, another workshop I did through Studio NPC was called Notes from Casting or Notes for Casting, I think it was. 
with uh, Reese Bridger of No Studio in particular. And I actually do know of, of that dude because I, I've been looking up Freaked Flea Pit, actually. I love the artwork for that, that game, so I, I did know about him, so I was pretty excited about that one. And uh, that one was, uh, basically we were sent uh, a Google Doc link of all these different uh, scripts audition lines basically for for characters that had already been cast for that we could practice with and we were supposed to pick one out of the list uh, do the audition uh, send it into June and then in the middle of the class they'd basically play our audition and we would then do like a read live for the director and uh, <clears throat> yeah so it was about oh gosh, I think there were maybe Ten people in the class. It wasn't a very large class, but it still took three hours of all of us going through and getting assessed. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun, actually. I ended up, <laughs> I ended up having to go last because uh, Reese Bridger lives in the UK, and this was actually supposed to predominantly be for people outside of the United States, but majority of people were from the US, <laughs> and not a surprise there. And, but so it was from midnight to 3 a.m. for those of us on the West Coast. So that was that was a bit tough, especially as a parent. But I muscled through. But I was late because I actually took a nap before the class and I slept in until 12:10. I was like, oh fuck, my alarm didn't go off. Oh no. And when I hopped in, June was like, it's okay. I just put you at the back of the list. I'm like, that's fine too. I probably wanted to go last anyway. I had to warm up my voice because I sounded like death warmed over. Kind of like how I sound right now. I'm actually sick still. I swear. The winter months are brutal. But anyway, <coughs> I picked a, I picked a character from Freaked Flea Pit that probably got cast like a year or two ago, uh, Ruby. And I did, uh, I really enjoyed the line reads for that character. That character is a lot of fun. They, they described her as as if a uh, genie from Aladdin was coked out of his mind on like meth and well cocaine and I was just sitting there like so so just regular Robin Williams then <laughs> okay but you know as a chick <laughs> have y'all seen his stand up that's basically <laughs> and I I actually was kind of proud of myself cuz I was the one person in the class who uh who had to do cold uh what do they call it cold reading yeah that's, that's where you're given a script you've never seen before and you're asked to read it right then and there. And I, I, got, put to the, my, I got put to the grindstone. I had to, to do that and it was, that was a challenge, but it was really fun. Learned a lot, got a lot of good notes. Um, and I learned that my audio still needs a lot of work in order for me to be like bookable for gigs. And so I've been doing a lot of research since then. Part of why I got the foam panels for my closet actually. And part of why I've been learning more about what you're supposed to do to submit your uh, auditions in, because if you go online, you get a lot of bad information about what you should do with your audition files. And I've also been trying to learn more about my interface and how to set it up properly. So <clears throat> I turned off, I guess my expander, uh, actually at one point my fucking compressor was on. I didn't know that. And that's probably why I sounded so bad. And uh, there's an expander, a compressor, and some other fucking thing, I forget. Equalizer, there you go. There you go. And so I've just turned everything off. All that's off. I adjust my gains manually now. Like if I'm needing to, to whisper, I, I raise the gain up to about like 30. If I'm speaking normally, it's usually at 23. And if I'm yelling or laughing maniacally, usually anywhere between like seven and 10. And that's really helped my audio quite a bit. And then I just don't do anything else. I don't, I don't mess with it at all in Adobe Audition. I just make sure nothing's peeking over like negative six, I think it is. And that's about it. And I just send my auditions in. And I have seen improved, marketed improved uh, results with that. Um, so yeah, that class was super helpful. Because he basically told me right there and then and there, like, yeah, you're bookable if you didn't sound like you're talking through a toaster. I'm like, okay, well, we gotta fix that. So, yeah. What's the other? Hold on a sec. There's people talking outside. What the fuck? I've got my door open because it's fucking. I just bleached and stuff and I don't wanna die. Hold on. Well,. I have to keep my front door open. I don't want it to choke on bleach fumes. 
Another uh, class I took, well, actually, this isn't really a class. This was a, if you're a part of Very Berry Studios uh, Discord server and you join the Tier 3 grouping, every month a uh, voice actor comes and uh, basically gives like an hour-long, I guess you can call it a lecture or a Q&A, where they, they talk about how they got into the industry, what really got them started, what they've been doing, you know, like what classes they've been taking, things they recommend doing. And then you can type, like you don't really get to talk in this one or anything, you just sit and listen and you type and you ask questions and they, they answer them as it goes along. So this is only $9 though. So this is much cheaper. Like uh, Acid Directors was 20. Uh, the, the workshop with Reese, I think was 120, something like that. It was a bit, it was pricier. And this, this is $9, and this is listening to uh, Bradley Gareth. I'm not, I'm the worst at knowing who people are. <laughs> I know that he's a voice actor who's been in the industry for a long time. And he's a very, very chill dude, lots of useful information. Uh, there was a question about fan dubbing, there was a question about uh, equipment setup, like what he would recommend, and you know, just in general. XLR condenser mics, obviously. Interface that is decent enough. You don't have to break the bank. Fan dub, eh, don't put your actual name on it if you're gonna do fan dubbing. <laughs> Unless it's like comic dubs, that's fine. Nobody really worries about those, but fan dubbing, there's licensing issues. I guess a lot of people like to do it to, to meet people and to get practice, but it's really not something you could ever put on a resume. So yeah, do it for fun, but don't expect anything from it. You know, that, that was basically it for that class. And other than that, I did do a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with June, and that's where I really got help with my my uh, interface and my audio. I did a stream share with him, and he was looking at my interface and helping me figure out what gain levels would be best for when I'm talking normally, whispering, and then yelling or laughing maniacally. And we played around with that, and he, he's been also helping me with my... Uh, all voice actors have to set up like a home studio check kind of thing where you do all that stuff basically you run through how your home studio sounds so that's that's been super helpful super informative and aside from that i have a uh, a vocal coach who i met up with in october he's going to be my vocal coach from october 31st until October 31st next year. He's actually, he's kind of interesting. His name's Gary Terza, I believe is the way you pronounce his last name. Apologies if I butchered that. Uh, he's a really well-known guy in the UK, but he's been doing voiceover for 20 years, lots of commercials. Uh, I guess BBC's Channel 4, uh, Channel 5. I, I don't know much about UK channels, but yeah. Very cool dude. Um, I've joined his master class, I believe it's called. And so for that is you, you pay, I think it's like uh, 750 pounds, however that translates over to USD at the moment. And you get his services for like a year. And also he, <clears throat> your first session with him is actually uh, going to the studio if you're in the area, which obviously I'm not, or working from your at home studio, which works for me because that's probably where I do most of my work anyway. And so it was on Halloween <laughs> that we met up and uh, I, I recorded my commercial demo reel. I recorded my IVR, which is like phone messaging kind of thing, an explainer video, um, an audiobook demo reel. And like ugh, there was like one other one. It was like some sort of weird authoritative thing. But yeah, I did like five different demo reels with music applied to them and everything. He had a sound engineer like every time we were doing the line reads and setting things up and redoing things, the sound engineer would go over it and then put it all together and put it to music. And then at the end of the, uh, I think it was about two hours. It wasn't very long actually, surprisingly, like two or three hours. And then I had all these demo reels to use. And from that point on, I'm allowed to email Gary and like submit, like if I'm doing an audition for something, I could send it to him and ask him what he thinks and he can give me pointers about how to make it better. And this could go for, like, he mostly works in commercials, but, you know, you can send him character stuff, too. Like, he's done all ki types of voiceover himself. And so that's been really helpful. He's helped me with quite a few auditions. He's also, he sends you a huge list of uh, pay-to-play places mostly to sign up for, which I have not, I've signed up for them, but I'm not paying to play yet. I don't, 
I don't have any advice on that yet. I have not tried it. A lot of the pay-to-play places like Voices123 and uh, VO Planet, you can't even apply for work unless you pay for the yearly subscription. I So I can't comment on how useful or reliable it is for finding work. I'd have to look elsewhere for that. I've not found much information online. But uh, one, the one place I didn't like was Upwork because like day one I got some... Uh, <laughs> Got some scammy stuff sent to me where people are trying to get my personal information. So I'd be a little sketchy about Upwork. There's a few other other sites I'll probably be joining and checking out. And I will update with what I find is useful in the future. But yeah, no, that's that's been it. It's been mostly like taking classes, uh, meeting up with people to do like, you know, figure out what's going on with my shitty ass audio. <laughs> Working with my vocal coach. And yeah, I'm trying to upgrade my studio, which, here, I'm going to close my door. Oh, it's all muffled in here. It sounds different. So, yeah, no, it, it sounds pretty good. It's It sounds like a studio. The reverb is cut down considerably when the door is closed. I feel like I'm in a coffin. It's kind of freaking me out. I'm going to open this door. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. More videos on the horizon. Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye, bee!